If you want an extremely high yield review to gain knowledge and test your knowledge on microbiology that is tested on all your assembly exams, especially the assembly step one, then you are at the right video. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more, then please be sure to power up that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you will never ever miss another video like this. So let's begin. What organism can be seen in this picture? Actinomyces. So take a moment and pause the video here and try to remember everything that you know about actinomyces. And if you can't recall much, that's okay. I will tell you all the high yield facts that you need to know right now. So actinomyces is a gram positive filamentous bacterial. It is anaerobic and it does not have a acid fast stain. You can also see sulfur granules. So whenever you see sulfur granules in a question stem, always think about actinomyces. These patients typically present with a cervical facial abscess and they can also have a aspiration. So they can have pulmonary infiltrate seen on chest x-ray that is due to pulmonary actinomycosis. The treatment of choice for these patients is with penicillin. So now for a quick question that tests a high yield concept. What structure do organisms resistant to penicillins lack? And that is a peptidoglycan wall. For example, mycoplasma and uroplasma. So those organisms do not have a peptidoglycan wall, so they are resistant to penicillins. So everything that I just said and every other organism that I will cover are extremely high yield. So if you don't remember everything, just watch this video again and again to test your memory and to really secure those points for exam day. So let's move on to our next organism. So what organism can be seen in this picture right here? Coccidioides imitis. So I know that many of you are more familiar with another picture that is more commonly seen, but I wanted to highlight that examiners love to test common organisms or common concepts, but just using a slightly different twist on it. So just memorize that this picture is showing you coccidioides imitis. But here is an image that you are probably a bit more familiar with this organism. So these are the two pictures that you could see on exam day. And do you remember how this organism is transmitted and what part of the US is it most commonly seen? What other features or characteristics do you remember about coccidioides? Well, let's get into that right now. So for coccidioides, you can see thick walled spherules containing endospores. It is most commonly seen in southwestern parts of the United States, such as Arizona and California. It's commonly transmitted through spore inhalation. Now let's move on to the next organism. What organism can you see right here? So this is an easy one. This is Giardia. Specifically, this is showing you the oocyte of Giardia. So it's very high yield for you to know what the oocyte and the trophozoites look like for Giardia. So this picture right here is showing you what the trophozoite for Giardia looks like. And of course, this one is more commonly known, more commonly seen, but again, it's a commonly tested organism, so just know all different ways that it can be seen for microbiology. So, what do you remember about Giardo? What are its characteristics? How does it present? What are some symptoms that patients can present with if they're infected with this organism? Well, let's get into it. So, Giardo is typically classified as being pear-shaped flagellated trophozoites or ellipsoidal cysts with smooth walls and more than two nuclei. 
You can get giardia by consuming contaminated water, and patients typically present with diarrhea. So if a patient is a camper or a hiker and they present with diarrhea, then think about a giardia infection. And how can this be treated? With metronidazole. So there are two classic presentations of giardia infections. The first one being a patient that presents with a history of an anaphylactic reaction during blood transfusion, and they also have diarrhea. You can think of a giardia infection. And of course, like I said before, if there is a hiker or a camper with diarrhea, then consider giardia. Now let's do another extremely high yield review question. What is the diagnosis in a two-year-old that presents with recurrent URIs and giardial infections that started when he was just seven months old? If you said Bruton's A gamma globinemia, then you are absolutely correct. So recall that immunodeficiencies are extremely high yield, and this is one way that you can be tested on exam day. And this is for all steps, USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2 CK, and definitely the USMLE Step 3. A camper presented with diarrhea and initiated therapy for this. Two days later, he presents with nausea, headaches, blushing, and abdominal cramps. What could have prevented these symptoms? Well, to answer this question, first you have to know what the diagnosis is, how is it treated, and possible side effects or interactions of this medication. So the answer for this question is avoiding alcohol-containing beverages. So this gives you a classic presentation of a camper with diarrhea. So of course you want to think about giardia. And I even have that picture there of the giardia trophozoite. So after starting therapy, they have a diarrhea, well not diarrhea, abdominal cramps, nausea, headache, and blushing. So you have to think about a disulfiram like reaction that can be seen in patients being treated with metronidazole and then consuming alcohol. So this is extremely high yield. So disulfiram like reactions occur due to acetylaldehyde accumulation. And that's why they have the abdominal cramps, the headaches, the flushing, and other symptoms like that. So it's very important that you know that metronidazole is commonly used to treat trichomonas vaginitis, bacterial vaginitis, and giardial infections. So if a patient presents with symptoms of any of these bacterial infections and they develop headache, dizziness, flushing, then think about a patient that possibly had an alcohol-containing beverage which led to the accumulation of acetaldehyde and then developing disulfiram-like reactions. And if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to pop that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. It also lets me know that you like this type of content so I can create even more. Now let's move on to another question. A 33-year-old female presents with vaginal pruritus and discharge. She has a history of bipolar disorder. Potassium hydroxide prep reveals flagellated organisms. Three days after initiation of treatment, she develops nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and difficulty walking. What is the most likely cause of this patient's symptoms? And if you said lithium toxicity, then you are absolutely correct. So recall that lithium is commonly used to treat bipolar disorder. But this patient presents with symptoms of a vaginitis. As I said before, for bacterial vaginitis and trichomonas vaginitis, those are treated with metronidazole. So patients can develop lithium toxicity if lithium is taken with another medication such as metronidazole. So let's do a quick review of lithium toxicity. So like I said before, 
lithium toxicity can occur with certain drug interactions. And some of these drugs include thiazide diuretics, ACE inhibitors, tetracyclines, and of course metronidazole and NSAIDs. Okay, now let's move on to the next organism. So what organism can you see in this picture? And if you said Pneumocystis gerevici, then you are absolutely correct. Now, what can you recall about this organism? Well, let's get into it. So to view this organism, you have to use a methenamine silver stain. So that stain is used so that you are able to see the organism in this picture right here. Patients typically present with a pneumocystis gerevici infection if they have a CD4 count less than 200. And of course, this commonly occurs in patients with HIV infections. That's why it commonly affects patients with impaired cell-mediated immunity. And you can treat this with trimethoporium. And what organism can you see in this picture? Candida. So what do you remember about candida? What does it look like? How do we treat it? What can predispose us to getting candidal infections? Well, candida is a gram-positive lactobacilli. It is a budding yeast with pseudohyphae. It can be easily scraped off. So this is commonly tested in a patient that has HIV and then they have lesions in their mouth and they can say hey it can be easily scraped off or oh it cannot be easily scraped off so if it is easily scraped off then you want to think about a candida infection and if it cannot be easily scraped off then what organism could that be leave it in the comment section down below so other predisposing factors that can lead to a candida infection include steroid use, diabetes mellitus, immunosuppression, and pregnancy. We can treat candidal infections with fluconazole. What organism do you see in this image right here? If you say Neisseria gonorrhea, then you are correct. So this organism is an intracellular gram-negative diplococcus. It has antigenic variation, which is why they don't have a vaccine for this. It is commonly treated with ceftriaxone. Now let's do another high yield review question. What is the treatment of choice of a four day old neonate with a purulent eye discharge? And that is cefotaxime. So this is a higher review of neonatal conjunctivitis. If you want to see an extremely higher review of this, you can check out my pediatrics review video where I break down the different types of viral, bacterial conjunctivitis that you can see in pediatrics. And I really break it down by age and the best treatment of choice for each. So what organism can you see in these two images? Cryptococcus. So here are three images that you can see and they all represent cryptococcus. So like I said, it's commonly tested. However, you can have different images of the same organism. So remember these three images here. So I highly suggest that you pause the video, memorize these images, and think about other features and characteristics of Cryptococcus that you know. So Cryptococcus is a budding yeast with a thick polysaccharide capsule. It can cause meningoencephalitis and lung disease. In order to see this organism, you can use latex agglutination and India ink. You can also use Musicarmine staining. I probably pronounced it wrong, but just know that for exam day, that is high yield. Okay, 
So let's look at the differences in the management and treatment of cryptosporidium versus cryptococcal meningitis. So for cryptosporidium, that is treated with nitazoxamide. However, for meningitis, it is treated with two drugs, one of them being amphotericin. What CSF findings would you expect to see in a patient with cryptococcal meningitis? Well, that patient, of course, would have a high opening pressure, high protein, high lymphocyte count, and low glucose. If you want to see more microbiology videos like this, then please be sure to let me know in the comment section below. I will definitely create a video with all of the high yield organisms that you would like me to cover. And if you like this video, please be sure to power the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. And to watch more high yield review videos, then click this video right here. Thank you so very much for watching. Goodbye.